Good afternoon traders, it's Mark here from the Day Trading Room. The time is coming up to half past um, 12 in the afternoon London time uh, with Friday the 8th of July and I'm just waiting, sitting here waiting for the jobs data so it's a good opportunity to review um, the last two days trades and look forward to some uh, some good data in an hour or so. Um, uh, Tuesday, obviously Monday was uh, Independence Day. Tuesday was a good day, but a, a video from that. Lots of tick pullbacks, great trading action. Uh, Wednesday was a losing day for me. I lost net 16 ticks. Now, why did I lose 16 ticks? I just was on the wrong side. So we get the correct chart up. I'm going to run through this, spend a bit of time talking about this because um, I'm going to talk about why I stopped when I did what caused me to realize I wasn't in tune uh, and a losing trade doesn't mean you're not in tune by the way you know I'll take a losing trade and then come back and make two winners or I'll make a great winner that's twice the amount of the loser I just there were certain things that happened um, that made me think okay you're not in tune with the market um, um, I've lost I'm down 16 net I don't want to do any more damage to my account I've given back a little bit of the days prior days trade but it's nothing. I will not remember a 16 tick loss. Um, losing days aren't very frequent for me. Um, but uh, if it had been a 60 tick loss, then I would have remembered it. So stop, come back then the next day fresh. So let's talk about what actually happened. Well, you know, the tape was just, um, it was a difficult read actually at the open. It was up, it was down. And a warning sign for me is when I'm opening a buy, I've got a buy ticket prepared and then I'm looking for a sell and then I'm looking for a buy and I'm flicking back and forth um, I'm reading the tape quite effectively you know we're getting some pulses up and down they're not very much but I'm not combining that with an actual read of the market so you really don't you're never gonna you're never gonna succeed with that because you don't have any conviction to your trade if you're taking your trade and it starts to work you're gonna end up snatching profits and that's exactly what happened to me you know I was long I was short I was snatching a few ticks losing a few ticks snatching a few ticks losing a few ticks before I knew it, I was down sort of five ticks and I've done three trades I thought I'm far far too busy really far too busy um, for the action I mean the action was was very very low I mean look at the range range was very poor um, didn't 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 get in tune with with what the market wanted to do uh, there was the gap fill there really in hindsight you know hindsight's easy to spot trades but okay buying this pullback for the gap fill you know would have been would have been a nice trade and then left it at that but uh, yeah I got chopped up a little bit and I was down I was down and then I ended up taking this was the sort of final trade for me where I took a, a 10 tick loser plus your commissions that's a total of 16 tick losses on a net uh, I just saw the spike lower here and I thought okay they've bought this the spike lower and they started to buy this I expected perhaps a drive up to here and that's what I was looking for and I just took an immediate stop immediate stop came out 10 tick loss so um, and called it a day you know I called it a day because I wasn't in tune and I realized I wasn't in tune it's very important to understand and acknowledge when you're not in tune with the market it's 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 it's, it's so key to uh, to realize that and secondly um, my emotional thermometer I could start to feel um, little tiny flecks of frustration coming in the fact that none of my trades were running on uh, that I was taking you know small profits small loss small profits small loss and I thought you know what whenever I sense the slightest thing of frustration of or any emotion that is potentially detrimental uh, to trading then I back away I've talked about it before emotional thermometer I've talked about it on, on the positive side when I'm feeling great about my trading I feel I can do no wrong um, you start to get an air of you know cockiness about you then that's a good time to stop as well so it works both ways and I just started to sense a little bit of um, frustration of not reading it correctly missing opportunities and just getting chopped about so I said you know what I'll take a 16 tick loss and I'll call it a day and that's exactly what I did and I came back the next day um, forgetting the day altogether and just preparing to do uh, profitable trades profitable trades looking for the next good trade that's all I'm looking for so let's talk about that was a little bit better yesterday uh, we had some data come out uh, it was a trade of the day for me really other stuff was just pretty scrappy um, 
with the push up there's the little pause on the tape nice and clear on the tape if you're watching the tape and then a pop and uh, I'm just scaling to these highs as we go held a little bit for a little bit of a pull back to this break level uh, I didn't go and end up scaling the last little batch there so it was a nice little trade that it was a good little trade um, pretty much based on tape reading and then a little pullback uh, obviously we haven't got the ticks because we're pre-market so we've got to use our own guidance okay second trade for me was buying a little bit of a deeper pullback didn't have much time because we had some data coming out at 130 uh, ended up buying it quite a good entry took a little bit of heat popped back up ended up scratching that I, I yeah should have known better really I should have thought they're not going to really position themselves until they see the next bit of data um, but it was something or nothing and I decided to ditch it, never, never hold position over data or full position over data. So that was that, it was a good start to the day, putting some on the ta uh, putting some in the bank. Uh, and then the next trade, actually, um, this has happened a couple of times, it's really based on, you've got to be watching your dome at the open. Watch your depth of market and just see what happens at the open. Now what, we ha what was happening here, um, let's say we opened here at 16, uh, you can see this here, so, say this was the open. Uh, the seller was soaking up some at 16, he then lower himself to 15, you'd then see that histogram build, he'd lower himself to 14, you'd see that histogram, he would keep lowering and lowering and lowering himself, the market wasn't allowed to tick up, uh, or if it did it was it was hit back immediately, uh, so basically there's a seller, an algorithm seller, who is just selling at the open and to do that he's just going best off he just wants a fill he's quite aggressive he knows there's plenty of liquidity about the open um, and that's exactly what he's doing he's stepping down stepping down so I watched this guy I've seen him a couple of days ago uh, whether it's the same one or not I don't know and what I'm looking for because there's an air of bullishness about the market because of the gap up I'm looking for some sort of push higher so I'm waiting for him to finish and as soon as I see him lift I'm in so he lifted I took the trade uh, we popped back up to the open scaling some out and there's my 10 as well and unfortunately we didn't get a run on this time which was disappointing so I ended up scratching the other half of the trade uh, as we came back because the premise had changed the premise was waiting for that seller to lift jumping on the long side waiting for a pop taking some risk off the table there and then looking for a runner didn't get the runner first premise great took some money off the table I'm not going to sit with a trade where the premise is not there anymore so I end up scratching that trade or the second half of that trade shall I say out uh, just above break even and <coughs> excuse me then I just sat on my hands a little bit waited to see what was going on we've got this little push down I've still got a, a slight bullish bias I mean look at the ticks the ticks have not been negative once and again we're using these as a tool to guide us about the sentiment of the market something I talked about here every low tick reading was bought now I know it's hindsight but what I'm looking for is what happens when we get a low tick reading we've been strong we've had the first 15 uh, 20 minutes or so there's the first low tick reading uh, below zero what happens the market is bought immediately buyers perceive that as value demand comes in supply backs off I am long I my stop is here I am long I'm looking for a longer drive now now I reduced my size on this position because I was happy to to take some from the earlier reprice on the data okay to take some here I didn't think it was as clear cut because this was very very choppy this whole thing was very choppy so I reduced my position size not wanting to be caught out in chop um, reduce the position size uh, to adjust it so this stop here wasn't going to undo uh, any any reasonable work from before so I took the trade there scaled out as we approach this high uh, which is the natural thing to do so because this position size is smaller I'm leaving it to run on a little bit longer traded this nicely held it and bought the stop into break even we've got a pull back here again I'm watching to see what happens to the ticks the market is bought immediately it's not allowed to go lower okay the second visit I'm starting to get a little bit more concerned but the support holds and so what I do is I add a little tiny bit more to the position just as a bit of a token gesture so I've got the core here I don't forget we're on small size now I'd reduce the size added this a little second batch here while those ticks are being bought while a dip below zero is being bought I am looking to stay with the position or add to it now I'm not saying I got mega aggressive on this it wasn't the setup of the century uh, but it was a play now where was my target now hopefully you guys will 
will know this, but um, I've, I'm looking for a target. What's my target? I'm looking for a target. Where am I going to place it? Now, we're struggling at 12,700 uh, cash, which was why, uh, you know, I, I, another reason to buy this was the support was holding. But the overnight high was uh, 64. So which is something you should have marked in your chart or a chart and exactly what I waited for. Waited for that to be tagged and then we've got 66 but I ended up coming out just a little bit before. Whole position all out. So good trade uh, and then sat back. Sat back and watched it just drift, 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 drift up and up, up. Very strong market. Uh, didn't get involved in it. No real volume there. Um, uh, yeah, I just let it let it trade in and thought, okay, let's see what happens today. So, kind of different setups there, really. Bit of a reprice, um, bit of a loop, bit of some losing trades from the day before, uh, but actively managing that, and actually man and actively managing uh, emotions and the way you approach the market, and then you know, uh, reducing the position size and looking for a longer target. So, all in all, can't complain so far this week. It's been a good week. Looking forward to jobs data. Uh, the way I'll be trading this is if there is a reprice, be looking to buy the first pullback, assuming uh, or sell the first pullback, depending if there is a reprice and which way it is, assuming the tape holds on that pullback. I'm watching the dome, see the drive up, market pulls back or the drive down, the market pulls back. I want to see then the supply demand balance hold, then shift back the other way talk about a little bit of that on the uh, tape reading course which by the way a lot of you have emailed me and asked me about that um, I'm just getting another independent trader to run through it um, to um, to spot any thin mistakes or anything I want to make sure that it's uh, it's okay so a couple of weeks maximum I hope it's done it's just being checked over so good trading guys as always please manage your risk and that means stop losses that means position sizing that means making sure you are trading uh, from a from a cool, calm, focused uh, perspective, you're not trading from an emotional perspective. The trading gut is a very good indicator of market action when you get experience, but when it's clouded with fear, greed, um, frustration, all those other emotions, um, then it becomes useless. So you have to know when that's starting to creep in and step back. Okay, so good trading, guys. Please manage your risk. I shall be back with another video. Uh, over the weekend. Take care.